Hey everybody and welcome inside Kerry Call's office for episode 8 of the Hilltop Sports Report. My name is Jumpin' Jack Carlson, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in. Many people might think that they know what sports information does on a daily basis, but at Division 3 there are many roles and responsibilities. In this episode, you will get a peek behind the curtain, so to speak, to see Kerry Call, what is his duties here at Cornell? Well, you're about to find out in this episode. Let's hit the music and start episode 8 of the Hilltop Sports Report right now. Let's go Rams! Let's go Rams! And away we go. Thank you so much, Carrie, for joining us on this episode. We're so glad that you've decided to join us on episode eight of the podcast. Thanks, Jack, for having me on. I want to give you a shout out first off for taking the initiative in creating this podcast. We just started a couple months ago. You've done a fantastic job, not only with the podcast, but all of your work with our webcast. It wouldn't be the same without you, Jack. In your first year here on the Hilltop, you've done great for all of our sports and promoting our program. So just want to say a quick thank you to for all that, that you've done so far. Well, I appreciate that, Carrie, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity that you gave me this summer. First year, I've had a great time. And so to start things off on this podcast, let's get a quick update as you are the sports information director. We've got a lot of sports going on right now at Cornell, so kind of give us the Reader's Digest version of what's going on on the Hilltop Sports Report. You bet. Another busy weekend in spring sports here for the Rams. Our men's tennis team will be competing in Peoria this weekend, this coming weekend. We qualified for the team tournament as the number three seed, and that's our highest seed in this tournament since 2017. So props to Coach Snyder and his program. And then the individual championships, singles and doubles flights will be contested on Saturday and Sunday. So the team on Friday and then this weekend with the individual tournament. Yeah, the track and field seasons are, you know, we're in a, the home stretch there. Natalie McAllister had just a few minutes ago has been named the Midwest Conference Outdoor Field Performer of the Week for another great performance in the, actually, she competed in the heptathlon at Augustana this past weekend. Men's and women's lacrosse teams, they're in the final weeks of their regular seasons, and both are very close to clinching a conference tournament berths. Women's lacrosse team, already with the school record for wins, they close out with two matches this week. With two wins, they would qualify for the conference tournament for the first time in the program's history. So we're very excited about that, and Meredith has done a great job with that program. And the men's lacrosse, it's looking like if we win our last match on Saturday, that will also qualify for the conference tournament. So that, that would be a big deal to have both teams qualify for their respective conference tournaments. And then uh, baseball and softball were in the last couple weeks of their season. Softball is currently in third place at six and four in the conference race. We have a big doubleheader coming up. We're at Grinnell on Saturday, and then we have two remaining doubleheaders in conference play. So looking good for softball. Baseball is on the road at Monmouth Tuesday here, and we're sitting in fourth place, have a chance to get into the top four in that with uh, two of the top teams that we have three game sets remaining with them. So it's definitely a busy time, but an exciting time for all spring sports teams. And we're looking forward, like I said, we're heading down the home stretch and hopefully lots of postseason opportunities for these teams. I appreciate the update there, Kerry. Make sure to follow the Rams on the Rams website, social media platforms, and if there's home events down the stretch, make sure to come out and support the Rams. So now, Kerry, let's go into a bit of a personal background on you. You grew up in Iowa and ultimately attended Central College. So when did you realize that you wanted to work in sports information for your career? During my undergrad at Central, I was a student worker for Larry Hopple, the SID at Central. And that's kind of when I got to learn about all the behind the scenes things that happen, you know, in, in the office or in the press box. So I, I was a, played all the sports in high school. I played a little bit of baseball in college, but I, after that, I still wanted to, to be involved. And I, I thought that was the best way to be around the game day and, and still feel a part of all these events. So I really enjoyed that. Larry, who is a Hall of Fame 
SID. He served at Central for over 40 years, I believe. He kind of actually advised me not to go in to pursue a career in sports information because of the hours and all this and that. And I guess I didn't take his advice very well, but it wasn't a transition straight from Central to the SID work. I started my professional career, I guess, in newspapers and got to cover lots of area high schools in Southeast Iowa, the Mount Pleasant, Burlington, area and uh, one of the schools I was covering was Iowa Wesleyan and the opportunity presented itself at Iowa Wesleyan they had an SID position open there and I thought the door was open to give me a chance to start that career there and I guess the rest is kind of history I've, I've stayed in the SID profession since 2005. Yeah so you spent two years at Iowa Wesleyan before coming over to Cornell so what is your lasting memories from your time there at Iowa Wesleyan? Yeah, sure. There's a lot of memories, lots of good people. I mean, I was young and, and learning the job as I was going there, but I had some mentors there and the relationships that we've built then and, and still have now. I definitely remember that. And it was a good experience. I enjoyed it. It was short lived, I guess, that Iowa Wesleyan, but I learned a lot. And I'm still learning today all the tricks of the trade, but overall, that was my stepping stone, I guess, to Cornell. That's fantastic. And so the Iowa Wesleyan news from March that it is closing, do you kind of have a reaction to that? And what do you think the impacts are going to be from the closure of that university? Yeah, I mean, it, I was saddened to hear that, but I guess not surprised totally. It's tough for uh, smaller size schools to stay afloat and you know, today's world. So I feel for those people. I still know people that were employed or are employed at Iowa Wesleyan. And yeah, my thoughts are, are with those people. And and maybe uh, we'll, we'll draw some student athletes to Cornell out of that pool. But yeah, it, 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 it was a good place to work and it's too bad that had, had to happen. You know what, I, I, did, I did have one story from Iowa Wesleyan that I forgot to talk about quickly. Um, I covered all their sports at Iowa Wesleyan, and the men's basketball program over there was very successful. And the coach was Alan Mignani. Mignani sounds like a familiar name, Carrie. Which uh, sports fit, Rams sports fans, in particular basketball, know that name. So Alan is the father of Jordan. Jordan Mignani, our all-time scoring leader, a fifth-year work-study student of mine. I remember when he was a little kid following his dad along. I was covering his teams. So that when I was talking about the relationship side and then it kind of come full circle and I see Jordan <laughs> every day and his dad's, you know, around a lot too during the basketball season. So that's a cool story. Yeah. Going ahead now to your move from Mount Pleasant to Mount Vernon. And you've served in this role here on the hilltop for 16 years. So what is it about Cornell that has kept you coming back year after year? What's kept me here at Cornell, it's, it's really the people here in this building on campus. I've built relationships with a lot of the coaches through the years. Myself, Coach Brazi, Coach Meeker, Lauren Nidegger, our head athletic trainer. We've been around a long time. I guess we're more of the elder spokespeople now, but, but even with our new group of co our younger coaches and you know we're kind of spread out we got some experience but some younger coaches and i think uh, we've all blended well together and now with this beautiful new facility we're all together our office spaces are very close and it's it's a good working environment the the mount vernon lisbon community has been great it's just a good place to live and raise a family i've got a couple kids a sixth grader and a ninth grader that we we do a lot of things in both communities and it's really a good fit for me and our families are are close by too that's fantastic so glad that you found your way to the hilltop and Really glad that you've had these experiences over the years and built those relationships and really done a fantastic job. So when you go now to the present, throughout a school year, what are some of the things that Carrie Call, Sports Information Director at Cornell College, what are some of the things that you find yourself doing from August all the way to May? That's a good question, Jack. And it's a, it's a tough one to answer. There are a lot of duties. The job in itself has evolved so much. When, when I was... A student worker at Central, that was before athletics websites. 
that was honestly the the World Wide Web just got introduced when I was a freshman in college moons ago. We didn't have social media, webcasting, all of this new technology. You were sending box scores through the fax machine, picking up the phone and calling, reporting scores. So it was totally different <laughs> to what it is now. So your question, what do I do? Uh, I guess how I say it the best is my job is to promote everything that is happening. I'm in athletics communications and get the word out to our fans, parents, our alums. Everybody knows what's happening and I have to have a good beat of each program, understand you know, the milestones that are happening, the significance of victories and conference positioning, historical stuff. A lot of that stuff goes onto the website. I would say that the website is my number one priority of everything I do, whether it's writing, the stats, photos, social media, webcasting, you know, linking our events. So everybody can watch our events. They can follow our stats in real time. So that's been a transition for me over probably the last 10 years when we started picking up, you know, all this live in-game video, audio, whatever. But along with the website, as I said, the stats, I, I won't get into too much detail. Lots of stories, photography, rosters and schedules. And that might seem like a, a 101 elementary. I do spend a lot of time updating rosters throughout the year. We, we're always going to have changes even throughout the season. Schedules in the spring like we've had, there's almost schedule changes daily. So it's keeping up to date and then providing those updates on the website through social media to inform our fans, to the media, to the conference office. So that, that's a big part. Um, and then coordinating with the conference office, the SIDs in the conference, the media, our local media, our staff, our students, the NCA office. There are lots of responsibilities after the game is finished, reporting, getting files to uh, certain website platforms or emails. So that's, that's a lot of the you know, the post game, just informing people of the results and stuff. And then you get to the social media graphics, lots of graphics. I got to give a shout out to Haley Harms and uh, Maya Dawson. They've been an integral part of our social media content and, and posting of those type of things. And also uh, coordinate, help coordinate in special events. We have our all sports recognition program coming up on May 8th. I'll play a role in that. Our golf outing our Hall of Fame recognition, induction. So there are some big events throughout the year that you know help organize. And then I guess lastly, Jack, it's a teaching and training constantly of the student workers, of myself. <laughs> They're like a sports team. You have freshmen through seniors and then you, you hit graduation and then you're, you have to coach or, or teach the new, the incoming student athletes so most of my student workers are student athletes and very passionate for athletics so that that helps and they have a good work ethic and and it's just my job to kind of direct them you know the things that i'm looking for and how they can help me yeah and we've seen throughout people serve so many roles here you might find yourself working stats if you need to do that and learn on the fly so and you're a great teacher so we're very glad that your instruction has come our way throughout this year and for others in past years as well. So how about on busy game days when say five to seven Cornell teams are in action? What exactly does that busy schedule entail for you? Sure, and I, I think it really starts back on the Monday to begin the week. We're looking ahead on Monday to what's what's happening through throughout the week and especially on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when you have your highest volume of events. Yeah, it, it's basically the organization and preparing for, for the needs, especially if we're hosting a bunch of events, simultaneous events, baseball, softball, lacrosse could be happening at the same time, all on campus. And then making sure that we have, along with uh, Zach Schlawball, he's, he's assisted with event management duties and done a tremendous job 
uh, throughout the year. He'll also assign workers in the press box. I'll assign workers to take photos, to help with stats, webcasts, making sure that Jumpin' Jack is ready to go for his uh, baseball webcast. The PA, we got to make sure that the scoreboard, score clocks, they're all filled and the students understand what they're doing and and they're trained. So it does get a little bit circus wild-like at times when everything is happening at once, but I think the more you prepare for those bigger weekends, then you're, you're in a better situation on a Saturday when you could have seven events happening at the same time. So exactly as it, it would be for a coach, you have that pre-game preparation, doing the advanced scouting to be sure. It's, it's, it's looking ahead on Monday saying, okay, on Saturday, we've got all these events, going to have to fill all these roles, so may as well get it started on Monday. It's right. worked great. You've got it all working to perfection, and you've had to kind of turn on a dime of late with the, the freaky weather in the Mount Vernon area, baseball games getting moved up, moved back. It's been a You're crazy right. spring. Yeah, in some cases, we'll get 24 hours notice that a road game got moved to our home field. And then you got to, yeah, you, you do have to turn quickly on that. And I'm just blessed with some great student workers that they have been accommodating and they, they adjust their busy schedules around Cornell Athletics. So that that's a big piece to it to make all this happen. Fantastic. And so you touched on this earlier on in the podcast, Kerry, but you spent six years in the newspaper industry with sports editing and sports writing. How important has that experience been for you through the years? That's a good point, Jack. The writing part is a huge role with my job. I'm writing stories every day that go to the website and that everybody can see from afar. So I'm glad that has really benefited me jumping into the SID job because I feel like I'm prepared. I go to other colleges' sites and I, I can see the SIDs that do have a journalism background. I can tell. And you have, there's so, so many stories that are expected to be written throughout the year that if, if you're not efficient with the writing, you're going to get bogged down and get backlogged, really. I'll see, you're, you're just, that's just huge, such a huge component. So I would say throughout the year, I, I write three to 400 stories during, I guess, a calendar year. And so you're thinking a story a day and on a weekend, it could be five to six to seven. So that, that has been a, a huge benefit for me. And then also teaching the students and try to, you know, help them along the way if, if they're interested in that. I'm definitely, any writers out there, I'm always looking for help. And Jack, I think you're one of them. You've experimented a little bit and, and did a great job with a couple of baseball stories. So it is a, a really important role within the job. And so over the years, 16 years on the hilltop, are there any moments in particular that stand out as your fondest memories? Yeah, there's there's lots of moments, uh, memories throughout the years, Jack. And I, I don't know if I can single out, you know, my favorite. But thinking back, I remember uh, one of my first years here, we hosted a, a huge international wrestling duel. The Russians came into our gymnasium, our old gymnasium. And it was you know, standing room only, USA against Russia in a dual meet, national media all around. And, and so that was, that was kind of an overwhelming but really neat experience, just the magnitude of that event. When we were back in the Iowa conference, I remember in 2009, our men's basketball team clinched the NCAA berth. We hosted Warburg here at, in our gym, and, and we went down to the wire, and we beat Warburg to win the conference championship, qualify for nationals for the first time in a while. And it's the crowds. I, I remember just the gym was packed. In 2013, we hosted a women's basketball regional tournament here. Again, just the atmosphere it was pretty neat to experience that from press row. And then, of course, the string of volleyball championships that happen almost annually, the excitement every every late fall for that. Those are just a few of the moments, but and part of it's just the journey, the, the grind through the seasons, you know, the, a lot of backstories and, and how you got to a certain point. But yeah, there, there's hopefully many more memories to come too. And it's really cool that you've 
have this background knowledge here at Cornell through 16 years, so you know the broader context. You say, hey, this is the first win that we've had over this team since 2014, and this is a huge victory. This is a huge step going to the conference tournament potentially this year. So that background knowledge is really important. That's what I really appreciate about you. You're so knowledgeable about the history of the college, and it's really been great for my role at serving as the webcast, so I know the broader context of that. Yeah, that, that's fun to be a part of, to, to be a part of a first conference championship of some sort or ninth consecutive conference championship. History is always happening, and yeah, I've spent a lot of time digging through our record books and to understand the significance of any sport, you know, how, how we've done in the past and how it relates to the current and the future. So. Fantastic. And so balancing on top of your SID work here at Cornell, you also have a job as a father that you make sure to address coaching both of your children. So how important is it that you are there for these moments in your children's youth? Absolutely, Jack. Family has always been a uh, number one priority for me. And I thank the administration, Jeff, the coaches, the student workers, yourself, everybody involved when I can't be at a Cornell event. There are multiple conflicts throughout the year where my children are competing and I'm their coach. Um, so that's a juggling act that somehow always make work. And it's, yeah, it's just a, a, time, a time for me that I, I need to be with them as well. So it has worked. We figured out a, a way, me, myself, to cover events, but also have the opportunity to be with my kids and to see them throughout their, you know, childhood and, and going through high school. So yeah, it's, that's a fun part for me too. And it's really fun as a student worker to hear about the different things. Uh, you come from, say, a little league game and something has happened in the game and you're like, wow, this happened in this game today. And just the stories that you have from, you know, teaching young children who never cease to amaze and never cease to have interesting stories to tell. So I just wanted to tell you that that's a really fun aspect hearing about that from you. And I think it's really great that you're there for your children. And that's very very, very great that you have made that effort and will continue to make that effort throughout the years. So as we kind of put a wrap on this podcast, you kind of alluded to this in the beginning, but we've got a busy end to the season for all of the Rams athletics. It's been a great 2022-2023 academic and athletic year here on the Hilltop. So any final things to look for down the stretch for the Rams? Yeah, it's going to be a fun next two or three weeks, Jack. Our spring sports teams, the there's a very strong chance, I believe, that our five teams, excluding track and field, that's more of an individual, our five teams, lacrosse, baseball, softball, and men's tennis, will all have a, a good chance to qualify for their respective conference tournaments. And that would be the first time that has ever happened in spring sports at Cornell. So we're kind of just getting started in with that postseason the opportunities there and uh, but as a whole it's it has been a great academic year at cornell in general and i i think the future is just i don't know if we've even scratched the surface yet with this new building the saw has been incredible for our student athletes opposing teams are always amazed at when they when they come in and they look at our facilities and so we're very fortunate and that's going to help with our recruiting retaining student athletes. It, it helps our staff. The, the morale is great. And it, it's a good place to work. And, and I'm really excited for next year and, and many more to come. So we're, we're definitely on a, a very good track. Yeah. And thank you so much for coming on to this episode. We got some great stuff. I hope all of you have enjoyed hearing this information from Kerry Call, he's really doing a lot for this college, and I think it's important to recognize just how much you mean to the Rams Athletics as the Sports Information Director. So 
the next time that you're at a Cornellograms home event, there's a good chance that you'll see Carrie call there, likely in the press box. So do jump in Jack a favor and say hello and thank Carrie for his work. Carrie, we couldn't be more thankful for all that you do at Cornell, and thank you for stopping by on this episode of the Hilltop Sports Report. You bet, Jack, anytime. Go Rams. All right, so one final shout out before we go away. You can email us at the Hilltop Sports Report at cornellcollege.edu. Email line, we'd love to hear from you. Questions, comments, or stories. If you're a former Ram and it's related to sports, send those our way. We'd love to hear from you. And also, as far as episode nine, stay tuned to Cornell Ram's social media platforms and me on Twitter at jumpinjack123. And we will keep you posted on when episode nine of the podcast will drop. Speaking on behalf of Kerry Call and the Cornell College Rams, my name is Jumpin' Jack Carlson saying thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. Let's go Rams! Let's go Rams!